get giggles, but I'm very glad to be here. I never fancied myself visiting Alaska for the third time, but it's happened and we arrived safely. Uh, some people want to know about my beginnings, and I can go back briefly to the time when my parents were married. Um, they met as immigrants around 1905, 1906, and uh, were married around 1913. Before they were married, they went over to Norway to visit each other's parents to make sure that they approved of the union. Then when they came back, Alice was born in 1915. I came along in 1917. And then my sisters Grace and Edna were born 1922 and 23. My father always wanted a boy, and he blamed my mother that it didn't happen. And only years later did we find out that it wasn't my mother's fault, it was the male yeah. that supplied the genes. So poor mom, you know, she had to have a lot of digs and, you know, reminders of her shortfall. Did he ever know that it was the male before he died? Um, or he didn't believe he, it? He may have, I don't know. But anyhow, um, I'm grateful to be alive because three times in my life I've been near death. I haven't talked too much about it, but when I was an infant, it was during World War I, my father was away. My uncle used to come in daily to check with my mother before I was born and afterwards. And then I suddenly became very ill and blew all over, my mother told me, and the doctor was summoned. He came in a horse and a carriage and decided that I had had milk poisoning. And the remedy then was hot baths with mustard. And I guess I must have survived those baths okay. I've never had mustard baths since, but it brought me back to life and to health. And then in 1926, I had another close call. Our family was uh, swimming with a lot of other Scandinavian families at a place called Mount Hope in Rockaway Township, New Jersey. And uh, we used to do that, and during the summer, all the families met and the children could swim back and forth. And we had our chocolate cakes and our fruits and all the rest of it. We had a real gala day. It was about 25 miles from um, Parkside Avenue where we lived. But on this fateful afternoon, all the heavens opened up and it seemed as though there was a miniature and then a monumental a thunderstorm. And the heavens were just covered with orange fire and glow and people were running for their lives. What happened? It was the munitions depot for the U.S. Army. And in those days, the supplies were not underground, but they were on top of the ground. And lightning had struck one of these installations, and then it spread like wildfire. And after the um, uh, initial explosion, I said everybody ran. I was in our Dodge car getting dressed. Nobody had dressing houses those days, you just used the back seat of the car. And my father grabbed my baby sister Edna, and um, Grace was, well, we were all scared stiff. And then we had to follow him, and we went through a little bay in the lake that uh, was shallow. And uh, we went up over the hill, we went past the spring where we got our water, and into the woods and the homes of the other side. I saw people, well, one kitchen, the jelly or something was bubbling over. The lady of the house had been canning. And another time when we were waiting along the roadside for people to pick us up, I saw a man on a motorcycle with another friend in back of him. His cheek had been completely blown out. And uh, it was like war. And then finally these two cars, Thora Benson and Mabel Hella's father stopped by. And three of us in each car, we were carried to driven to safety, and we finally got back to West Orange. How old were you about the time? About I was nine years old? It was 1926. And yeah. you remember? Nine, nine years old. And um, the paper the next day, oh, it was exciting, we made the paper. It said the Gabriel Opsel family walked all the way home from Rockaway. Well, that would have been a 25-mile walk. But for years, we kept that clipping in a, a banjo clock that was in the hall, you know, and we referred to this. What newspaper was this? Newark Evening News. Just uh, by the way, for your information, you could probably go to a major library like uh -huh. Newark or Princeton, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and on the microfilm, 
find that same paper oh, with the okay. date and you could have Xeroxes yeah. made. Yeah, well. It's in the archives. Uh -huh. so. Well, my father went back the next day, uh, a news reporter who stood on a high hill watching the happening. Uh, he had given his coat to my uh, father for uh, Edna because she was in the nude. It wasn't time to change clothes for her. And um, anyhow, he finally located him. He had been injured in the hospital. And he returned the coat, and then he went to pick up our car. And um, my mother always made silk congee shirts for my father. And uh, they had been stolen, and some beautiful big Bing cherries we were going to have. It was the first cherries, I guess, of the season. Well, that was the second time. And then the third time was uh, when Paul was home and we were going to the Damon Douglas Christmas luncheon. Uh, I was so glad to get out because I'd been kind of tied down to the house and Paul was old enough to leave the two babies with him. And the next day was uh, Christmas Day and we were going to have 14 for dinner. I had everything ready except I hadn't washed the potatoes. And the things that were ready were out on the side porch. It was very cold. Weak. And what happened when we after we had gotten to the luncheon, I was saying goodbye to the uh, president's wife, and I saw smoke coming from the baseboard. And I said, look, there's smoke. And suddenly there was a stirring in the hall, and people were running every which way. And um, we went with a stream of people. And two of the bellhops said, here, follow us. Well, I had remembered that if we were going to visit Paul, each of us was going to go on a separate airplane because um, we had heard about other people who did that. We wanted the two girls to have one parent. If we were both going to be injured, you know, we weren't both going to be down on the same plane. So Paul, uh, Ovi was saying, come on, come on. And he was going down the stairwell. And I saw smoke coming up. And I stepped back. And I decided I was not going to go down into that smoke. We would both be dead. So I ran back, and I saw this special rack there for my fur coat. I grabbed the fur coat, and I followed these bellhops with 12 other men and women who had come out from different rooms. Ours was the last Christmas party. It was to be over at 6 o'clock. This was around 4 o'clock. And I had had a wonderful time. You know, they had lobster, 